there's been a huge spike of the amount of people who are investing in property through limited companies. Between 2011 and 2021, there's been a 491% increase in the use of limited companies to invest in property. In some latest research from GetGround, 75% of property investors said that they would use a limited company on their next purchase. But the whole use and nature of using a limited company to some kind of blows their mind and is complex and confusing and quite scary. So I wanted to answer some of the most common questions that come up regarding using a limited company to invest so you can invest with a lot more confidence. So question one is, do I need to earn a certain amount of money to be able to set up a limited company? The short answer on this is no. So there is no restriction on you opening a limited company to invest in property. The only restrictions come around lending. And as I said before, the lenders will look at you as the director and all directors involved in that company and look at your employment status, your income, your credit history, whether you own any other property, and they will consider all of those factors when making a decision about whether they will lend to you to in order to buy a property. And of course, you will need a minimum amount of capital available to invest. In the Northeast, for example, you will need around minimum of £18,000 for the deposit alone, and then potentially another ten to 12000 for fees, refurb costs. So you'll need at least £30,000 to invest in property. You'll also need, as a first-time landlord, as a first-time investor, you'll need a minimum income of £30,000 to be able to get a mortgage. The restrictions on mortgages are normally higher for first-time landlords. You've got less history from the lender's point of view, so you need to earn more in order to satisfy their risk. But also, if you are a first-time landlord and a first-time investor, you actually might need a higher deposit deposit than I mentioned. The deposits that I mentioned were based on a 25% deposit, so 75% loan to value. However, some lenders will require you to essentially put in 30% or even 35%, depending on your circumstances, to invest on a first-time basis. So the next question is, how do I pay myself? How do I take money out of my limited company? There are four ways to do this and how you actually do this will depend on your circumstances and your tax position. So it's best to speak to an accountant or a tax advisor as to which one is best for you or which combination of them is best for you. But I'm just gonna go through them one by one. So number one is director salary. You can withdraw a salary as you would with any other job and you can actually take a tax-free salary of up to 12047 pounds and that is because you're allowed that is your tax-free um, allowance from from the government but of course if you have any other sources of income or any other jobs then you wouldn't be able to get that twelve thousand pounds tax-free you would then have to pay tax depending on your tax banding so the next method of paying yourself is through dividends and actually this is the most tax efficient way to pay yourself if you have other sources of income and this is because there are a number of tax advantages to paying yourself through dividends Dividends. Now, dividends are only paid out on profit, so your company would actually be having to make a profit in order to pay you dividends. And dividends are essentially paid out to shareholders of a company as a benefit of being a shareholder of that company. So you get it with PLCs, so public limited companies, so large multinationals such as Tesco, Amazon and Apple will all have shareholders who have a dividend payment that's paid out on a quarterly or yearly basis. And it's the same for your private limited company that you would pay yourself dividends on any profits and you could structure that however you want. You could pay them out on a monthly basis. You could pay them out at the end of the year. You actually get a thousand pounds tax free on the first thousand pound dividends that you are paid. And then after that, the amount of dividend tax is dependent on your tax banding. I'm going to put the latest tax banding on the screen now so you can see the amount of tax that you might pay. But the reason this is a lot more tax efficient way of paying yourself compared to salary is that as you will see, the tax brackets and the amount of tax that you will actually pay is actually far less than compared to salary. And that is because it's not seen as an equivalent income. It is seen as separate because it's all to do with shares and therefore the tax banding is different. Third way of paying yourself is actually completely tax free. And this is all to do with loan repayments. On the most part, it is likely that you will be funding your property investments through your own capital. So for example, some personal 
personal savings, maybe withdrawing equity from your home, inheritance, for example. And all of those are essentially loans from your personal name to your limited company. And you can actually choose to pay yourself back through loan repayments on a however you want to structure it. You can even charge your company, your property company interest, and then you're paying yourself back via the loan repayments and interest payments. But of course, interest payments would actually be subject to tax. So again, speak to an advisor about which is the best setup for you. But say if you loaned your, your property company £20,000, you could pay yourself that £20,000 back over a two year period, say on a, a monthly basis and not have to pay tax on it because essentially you're just paying yourself back. Now, of course, you might not want to do that because you might just want to reinvest the money and buy another property. But if we're looking about how to withdraw money from your property company, that is a, a way of doing it as well. And lastly, is another tax efficient method, which is all to do with pensions. You can pay yourself into a private pension pot from your limited company, which of course you are paying yourself in a tax free efficient vehicle, which is a pension. And it's something that is a business expense and is therefore tax deductible. So you're actually reducing your limited company corporation tax bill as well. So on many levels, the pension is a great way to pay yourself and you should be utilizing it alongside the other methods that I've mentioned because you have a certain tax allowance every year for your pension as well. So next question is, what tax would I be liable to pay within my limited company? Now, there's two ways that you would be charged tax. You've got your personal tax as a director on anything you earn. So whether that's on dividends or on salary, so you would be liable for national insurance and income tax on salary and dividend and the amount that you would be taxed would be dependent on your tax position and your tax bracket that you're in. And then secondly, your company would be liable for tax for any profits that you made. So the current corporation tax liability at the moment as it stands is 19% corporation tax up to 50k profit and then that, that goes up above 50k. So you are liable for tax in, in two different ways. But of course, there are many ways of reducing your tax bill, particularly from a corporation tax point of view. And of course, that is something to go and speak to your accountant about. Next question is, do I need a separate bank account for my limited company? Simple answer on this one is yes, you do need a separate bank account for this. And there are a few reasons for this. One, it is a requirement from lenders and mortgage companies that you have a separate business bank account, which is related to your limited company. They will expect to see that because, for example, when you're paying your mortgage direct debit, it will need to come from that bank account. And also it adds legitimacy to that limited company from their point of view as well. And then secondly, from an accounting point of view, it is much cleaner and really a requirement from your accountant's point of view that you have a separate bank account where all of the transactions for your limited company are in there and you can see from an audit trail point of view all of the transactions going in and out of that account relating to that limited company and that's just a lot cleaner and best practice really in terms of accounting. And in terms of the type of bank account, you just want a business bank account. And of course, there are lots of options out there. As I said before, I prefer the modern banks, the non-high street banks, the banks such as Wise, Starling and Monzo. I've used them all and the speed to which to open account, often a number of hours, even less sometimes, and the amount of flexibility and just the general kind of customer service that you get and the usability of those apps and those online banks, in my opinion and my experience, far better than with the legacy banks and the high street mainstream banks, which are very much stuck in the dark ages. So the next question is around lending and it is, can I still get lending and a mortgage using my limited company? And will they consider my income or the income of the company when making a decision about whether to provide me a mortgage or not? Firstly, in terms of mortgage mortgages are widely available for limited companies. However, there still are some restrictions about the amount of lenders that will lend on limited companies compared to 
if you're buying in personal name. So there is a slight drop off in lenders. You're going to more specialist commercial buy to let lenders rather than sort of high street banks, but mortgages are widely available for a limited company. One thing to note here is that mortgages do tend to be a little bit more expensive between one and one and a half percent compared to investing through a personal name. But given the other advantages of investing in a limited company, that's just worth paying for. And in terms of what the lender considers when making a decision about whether they give you a mortgage they will be looking at a number of things but in terms of your situation as a director as I mentioned before they will actually be looking at your status your circumstances first as to whether they will give a mortgage in principle so they will look at everything from your employment status how long you've been in that job what is your income level your credit history whether you've had any missed payments any CCJs any bankruptcy etc they will look at whether you own any property, do you own residential property, are you a first time landlord. If you're investing with anyone else, they will go through the same set of assessment with them as well. They will be looking at your circumstances and your financial history in the first instance as to whether they will give you a mortgage on a property. In terms of the limited company, this will be a secondary consideration. They will want to look at the portfolio owned by their company. What is the debt situation across your portfolio? what is this loan to value? They often want to see a loan to value of 75% or less. They don't really like to see it beyond 75% because they see that as a, a bit of a risk in case interest rates rise and you're essentially going to be in a negative equity situation as well if the market drops. So they will look at what else the company owns and what its debt situation is and essentially make a decision whether the company is in a stable position and it's not overstretching itself. And they will also, of course, after after all of that, after looking at the company and after looking at the personal name, they'll also make a decision based on the property, its rental value, make some stress tests on the rental value, and then look at the condition and make do an evaluation and evaluation as well of the property's value. All of that will be considered when the lender makes a decision as to whether to lend to you on a mortgage through your limited company. Guys, if you're enjoying this video today and getting a lot of value from it, if you could do me a huge favor and subscribe to the channel, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you. So final question question is, can I set up a limited company myself? The short answer here is yes, you can. You can go onto the government's website and set up a limited company there. However, what I would say is that there is some elements to this that you need to ensure that you get right. There is some questions that you'll be asked around your SIC code, for example, which is all to do with your tax coding as a company and what activity you undertake. So there's elements like that, which mean that you've got to ensure that you've set it up right and you've also got to ensure that you've, you've picked the right company structure and therefore it is important to speak to an expert and an accountant to make sure you're setting yourself up in the right way because it is very difficult if you make any mistakes here to unravel it and unpick it particularly if you go on to buy many properties and then you've got your company structure set up that could potentially cost you thousands of pounds so it is important that you speak to an expert when setting up a limited company and actually I would advise using a company to get that set up so you don't make any mistakes and you ensure that you're going to get it right. So what I'd recommend is you actually use one of our partner companies. They're called GetGround. There is a link below in the description where you can set up a free consultation call with them and they can talk you through the benefits of investing in a limited company and provide a free consultation about how they can help you get that set up. So there is lots of complexity around setting up a limited company and managing a property within a limited company and it is good and as I always say it is best to lean on experts such as GetGround who I mentioned to help set you, the company up and your tax advisor and accountant to make sure you're getting the best advice to make sure you're making the right decisions before you get set off in property investing through a limited company. And we've come to the end of another video. I really hope you've enjoyed it and got a lot from this. If you have, I would really ask that you could subscribe to the channel. Really appreciate the support. We're trying to grow it. And the more people subscribe, the more that we know there's people that are valuing this content and it would encourage us to do more and more. So thanks very much.